<laughs> hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As you just saw the clip, yep, that's Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> One of the most dim-witted duos of the whole MTV generation. And yes, I've been a huge fan of the series ever since I saw it when I was only eight years old when we had cable at our old house with my family. <laughs> we used to watch the show all the time during late night television on MTV. We tune it on anytime it's on and we basically just watch Beavis and Butthead doing a lot of dumb things and they go score some chicks. Not to mention they do a lot of video commentary of all the music videos that they watch in their own living room. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they were fun. Yeah, the series was created by Mike Judge, who later went on to do the TV series King of the Hill, along with the movies Office Space, Intricacy, and Extract. Yeah. But Beavis and Butthead was the most popular series on MTV, and yes, it did lead to that controversy that happened uh, back when the show had aired at the time, uh, starting with the episode uh, that led to that controversy, yeah, the fire episode, in which a five-year-old actually watched the show and, and actually set the entire house on fire, actually killed uh, his three-year-old brother, and that's what led to the, the controversy that happened, which I know, I don't... It's just a prime example of bad parodying. I mean, they had to blame Beavis and Butthead because of you know, what the boy did, but that's what happens when you don't watch a child. I mean, you just can't protect stupid. But the show continued to go on. Um, it actually did very well in the ratings. It grew really strong. It had a lot of merchandising everywhere. And, <laughs> and of course, um, we used to watch it late at night with me and my brother, Jason. And we just have fun. We, we like to poke fun on the show a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> coming up with all these jokes that they had. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of funny jokes that I could think of. Yeah. Never get tired of it. Well, anyway, they, they had their own movie that it was in development uh, just after the series became so popular. And I'm about to review it right now called Beavis and Butthead. Do America. Now, this is not the special collector's edition that Mia had gave me as a gift. Yes, uh, this is actually a request to Mia, who happens to be the oldest daughter of Joe Mantegna, you know, the actor, and also the oldest sister of Gia Mantegna, the actress, <laughs> young actress. So, she bought it for me as a Christmas gift, and I definitely thanked her for this. I'm really happy to own the DVD of the movie, even though I never had bought any of the DVDs of the series, and I wish I had. Mostly because MTV and, and Paramount decided to just release the, the Mike Jugs collection. Yeah, mostly because of the music copyrights that causes all the episodes to be incomplete, all edited down, um, where all the music videos are, are in, a, in a separate disc as the special features. Uh, while it does have tons of great extras, they could have done the set any justice, and that sucks. Yeah, unfortunately, it's also on the, the supposedly complete collection, which is not really complete at all. It's all incomplete, uh, but with the volume 4 added it together, which happens to be uh, the 2011 reboot of the series, you know, after King of the Hill got cancelled, and we finally had a comeback for MTV until they pulled the plug. It's such a shame, because MTV is nothing but a joke these days. Yeah, with all these reality shows taking over, not enough music videos to play, except watching it late at night. And even though, yeah, we're not getting that many good music videos anyway, well, what else is new? <laughs> but this was back when MTV was really good. 
and we had a lot of good shows. And they'd still play music too, every day, you know, sometimes. Like, they could play it in the afternoon, they could play it at night, they could play it throughout the entire weekend if they have to, while they play a lot of great shows. Come to mind. <laughs> but Beavis and Butt has always been my favorite of them all, as opposed to all the other shows that aired on MTV at the time. So, yeah. So, this was my favorite show. Yeah, I guess mostly because I I was into all these funny, dumb humor that we get from them. Yeah, I guess mostly because we had Bill and Ted, and and then later we started getting the Wayne's World too, and you know, from Saturday Night Live, and they had a movie. So I I guess we're into all the dumb guys, you know, dumb dudes just going around doing a lot of crazy stunts and just having fun. Do whatever they want. <laughs> well, basically, the movie is about uh, Beavis and Butthead decided to search for their stolen television set by these two guys while they wound up getting involved in a terrorist plot. Yeah, mostly because there was um, an X5 unit that's going to spread around the country. They're trying to stop these two uh, couples from detonating the the entire virus of the X5 unit. So there you go. <laughs> but anyway, it's a cool uh, cover art that they chose, um, especially on the back as well. Um, special Collector's Edition was a lot different. So, But you can also pick up the Special Collector's Edition that's included on the uh, the complete, the supposedly complete collection of uh, Beavis and Butthead that's now on DVD that you can find in stores, but keep this in mind, this is not the uncut set that has all the episodes that you're expecting. But the only way you can get all these episodes is you got to order it on iOffer on the internet, or even try to find uncut episodes available somewhere on the internet if you have a chance. Or you can also get all the episodes that they play it on MTV Classic. Because yes, we now have MTV Classic, and they do play uh, all the episodes of Beavis and Butthead, so you'll definitely get a chance. So if you have your old DVDs of the Mike Judge collection and you want to get the uncut versions, uh, feel free to do so if you have to. But chances are, <laughs> you'd just be better off having the uncut episodes the way they were meant to be seen, with all the music videos intact, not cut off, not lines of dialogue being edited down or cutting down, I mean, we deserve better for all Beavis and Butthead fans, and that's for sure. But nevertheless, um, I could still pick up the set, though, granted, uh, mostly for the extras and more of the extras on this DVD set that's not included on, that I, that Mia just gave me, but that's okay. I still wish they had it in a better packaging, though, but I guess I could take it elsewhere. I just hope the disc will still be able to play perfectly without any scratches coming around if I had to take it elsewhere. Well anyway, the first time I saw Beavis and Butthead do America, I saw it at the drive-in feeder in Gardenia, or Gardena, California, which is the Vermont drive-in that's owned and operated by Pacific Feeders. It's no longer there anymore because it now became all these household uh, developments that they got. Yeah, they, they now became simply houses, so they took over the property. But I remember um, going out with my cousin, or my aunt, uh, named Anna. Uh, she used to take me out uh, to a lot of places, and and she went out with her boyfriend, uh, Johnny, so we went to go see the movie at the driving theater, and, and they were playing Beavis and Butthead to America, uh, along with uh, the movie The Relic, which is an underrated horror movie that was directed by Peter Himes. It's actually a very good movie. Um, if I ever find a copy of that film, I'll definitely uh, have a chance to review it and watch it. Well, anyway. um, I had a good time watching this movie. I, I had fun. I was laughing like hell when I saw this. I mean, there, there's a lot of memorable scenes in this movie that I just never forget. But let's get to the review. 
It stars Mike Judge, who does the voice of Beavis and Butthead, along with Tom Anderson, which is basically sound more like Hank Hill. Uh, well, even when I saw King of the Hill, of course, uh, when it aired uh, on Fox um, a year later, uh, a lot earlier actually. Um, uh, when I think of Hank Hill, I think of Tom Anderson, which, you know, Beavis and Butthead always pesters uh, the next door neighbor. <laughs> um, he also voices um, Principal McVicker and, and Mr. Van Driesen and all the rest. Uh, we also got Demi Moore with Bruce Willis, you know, both of which were a couple at the time, and you know, before they were divorced uh, two years later. Robert Stack from the TV series uh, The Untouchables and he went on to do the show Unsolved Mysteries so you always recognize his voice and you know, he always has that deep um, strong voice of his and he's been in other films too like Airplane Come to Mind um, he was a great actor sadly no longer with us uh, he passed away in 2003 but he was a great actor, nevertheless. Uh, Cloris Leachman, you know, from the TV series Phyllis, uh, as well as the Mary Tyler Moore show, basically plays Mary's uh, best friend, along with Rhoda. But uh, Cloris went on to do a lot of stuff, mostly. She was on the TV series The Facts of Life, you know, replacing the Charlotte Ray as Miss Garrett. So she was taken over, but she also did a lot of uh, movies and uh, mostly the the Mel Brooks movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Richard Linglater, who's the director and writer of other films, but he's also the actor as well. So. Uh, Dale Reeves, Greg Kinnear, uh, who's been on the E Entertainment. Um, ever since the, the 80s and 90s which his first film of course was uh, Sabrina yeah the, the remake not not the not Sabrina the Teenage Witch no Sabrina that was a remake uh, uh, with uh, the movie with um, Audrey Hepburn you also got David Letterman yep that's right David Letterman uh, also did some voice scene in this uh, interesting enough, they he even got Babies and Butthead on a uh, late night with David Letterman, <laughs> uh, the Late Show with David Letterman. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. He was a great talk show host for its time. Christoph Brown, um, Eric Bogosian from the movie Talk Radio, and he also had worked on other stuff too. Uh, Jacqueline Barba and Pamela Blair. It's written by Mike Judge along with Joe Stillman, and based on his idea and based on his show, he was a butthead, and it's directed by Mike Judge. The movie begins when we meet Beavis and Butthead, two of the most uh, dim-witted duels of the entire city of Highland. They wound up having a dream, at this rate Butthead was having a dream, where they were both giants and they're terrorizing the entire city <laughs> uh, basically just knocking down helicopters and and they're being shot down by tanks everywhere but then uh, Butthead suddenly spotted uh, a chick uh, inside the first story window and <laughs> and he grabs her while Beavis suddenly shows up and started to uh, shooting all the fire flames out of his mouth like he was Godzilla and just <laughs> taking down everybody but then Beavis suddenly came in because they both want to score on the same chick that Butthead was holding yeah so they were about to have a fight until <laughs> until we realized that the whole thing was a dream and <laughs> so Beavis actually woke Butthead up only to discover that their TV is being stolen by two guys um, which turned out to be the hitman of Muddy Grimes that they was hired to do the job. Well, anyway, well, before that, uh, 
but it basically started to trace its steps by looking at the, the window that's already been shattered open and then he sees all these footprints around the, the floor and then he noticed that the TV was gone and then the door was open so he kept looking at these angles a few times until he, he begins to wonder, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> so, Beavis and Butter decided to go all the way everywhere to, to find a new TV. But, of course, they just keep damaging them everywhere they go. Um, such as going inside their high school, yeah, Highland High School, because they live in Highland. And they just took a TV from the AV club, only to be bumped into their teacher, who was basically a hippie type of teacher. You know, the guy with glasses, as we all know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Van Dressen. Well, anyway... <laughs> well, anyway, they, they took the TV, but they once they went all the way downstairs, they get suddenly they got bumped into the principal, yeah, McVicker, and they dropped the TV um, down to the ground. So then they just continue to look for some more, but they just keep destroying them by accident. Uh, that is until they went inside a hotel that has TVs everywhere. Uh, and not only that, but they also want to score some chicks. And by the way, Beavis and Butthead are voiced by my judge themselves. <laughs> well, anyway, that is until they get involved with um, a guy named Muddy Grimes, who's voiced by Bruce Willis. He was basically waiting for two hired hitmen to actually murder his wife, Dallas, who's voiced by Demi Moore. Yeah, because at the time, Bruce Willis and Demi Moore were a couple until their divorce in 1998. Yeah, that sucks. So basically, he mistaking Beavis and Butthead as two hired hitmen because they want him to do the job to actually murder Dallas, and mostly because Dallas also has the X5 unit that's hidden somewhere. Because, as we know, the X5 unit is a deadly virus that's going to spread around the entire country which uh, which a ATF agent Fleming that's voiced by uh, Robert Stack you know, along with his uh, partner agent Bork who's voiced by Greg Kinnear they're about to stop him from detonating the, the unit so that's why they're trying to, to track them down and track down the unit before it's too late. So Beavis and Butt had accepted the job to actually do her. <laughs> yeah, so they want to score her completely. By taking a trip down to Las Vegas, they took a plane there, which, yeah, was suddenly chaos started to happen already. <laughs> Especially with the turbulence that was going on once they start the, the, the plane. and. Uh, of course, they also uh, bumped into a an old woman, voiced by Cloris Leachman. Yeah, she was there just so that you know, she can have some, <laughs> uh, so she can um, go to Las Vegas, you know, win some slots uh, at the casino and you know, be able to have fun. Yeah, while they while they mistaken her saying that, yeah, we're gonna score some sluts. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Well, they had trouble putting their seatbelts on. Uh, that is until you know, Bud had suddenly uh, spotted uh, a stewardess, and he helps uh, Butthead put on the seatbelt, and he says, "I love you." Uh, so then, when the plane starts, yeah, there's a lot of turbulence, and <laughs> and B was just screamed, "We're all gonna die!" <laughs> And Butthead just want to get out just to to meet the, the stewardess, and then he keeps flying over, and all all the stuff is coming right out. And then he landed all the way down into into the back, and that's where he spotted the, the way the stewardess uh, already putting the her seatbelt on, you know, just to be protected. <laughs> and he's telling her to do it again. And then then Beaver suddenly takes. Um, the old woman's medications and 
and suddenly becomes the great Conholio. I am the great Conholio! I need my TP for my bunko! <laughs> yeah, of course you gotta do it like this. To... <laughs> and that's when the, the plane just went out of control and then and then the butthead suddenly lands into the cockpit and and the pilots just tell him, Hey, get out of the cockpit! And then <laughs> butthead just said, But you just said, No! <laughs> Almost sound like he's gonna say, But you just said, Cockpit. So they arrive at Las Vegas, and that's where they play the song uh, "Roller Coaster" by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, they, it was a remake of the song from the '70s, and that was a classic song, by the way. But, but I definitely love the Red Hot Chili Peppers version. And then you see Beavis and Butthead just going around Las Vegas. Yeah, they even spotted a <laughs> an Egyptian uh, chick. Yeah, with big boobs. They're just staring at it, and, and then they're just they're just dancing around in those 360 shots and everything until they wind up uh, getting taken by the security guards. Uh, but then they have their hotel room that they wind up entering, and um, yeah, but that that happened after <laughs> after they got picked up by this one guy who has the names uh, Mr. Beavis and Mr. Butthead, and and they just couldn't understand their they didn't understand the spelling of their names and until they figured out that hey they got the same guys as us <laughs> uh, yeah well anyway they uh, once they went inside the hotel room that's when uh, they spotted Dallas and, and Dallas was about to do the job for them and they wanted to do him <laughs> yeah muddy but they <laughs> yeah and of course she wants up taking the uh, Beavis' shorts that, of course, he took off. <laughs> yeah, mostly because he wanted to score. While Beavis and Butter were just having a big fight with each other because they want to score her. So she she hid. So basically, she took the X5 unit and hid it inside Beavis' shorts and sold it up, and just gave Beavis uh, back his shorts. And wow, yeah, she's a she's about to. Uh, <laughs> Seduce both of these guys, and yes, yeah, she has big boobs. So they continue to do the job by taking, taking a, um, the bus all the way to Washington. Which, yeah, they they want to bumping into the same old woman that that they just met inside the plane. So they're just going all the way uh, to the Hoover Dam, and yeah, they they suddenly screwed up too. The Hoover Dam really, really good, and then they wind up uh, taking the the wrong bus, where it's filled with nuns everywhere, <laughs> and saying, "Well, we're in a bus filled with chicks, hey baby." <laughs> so they go around doing some plenty of screw ups over there. Meanwhile, they they get involved in in um, the whole uh, tracking down by the X Five unit, which which they're being taken down by by the ATF agent Fleming yeah, along with agent uh, Bork well at first they were going to track down Muddy and and, um, and Dallas but at this point Beavis and Butthead suddenly gets involved so they want to track them down just so they could find the X5 units so basically they just spend the entire movie just trying to do whatever they can uh, yeah, there were there are a lot of funny moments in this movie too, where you know they <laughs> where they they wind up um, where they they wind up uh, going into the desert because they just missed the bus, and that's when uh, that's when the Beba suddenly gets a hallucination scene where suddenly he dreams that yeah they were both in a uh, in a really crazy. Uh, sequence right there which is basically which believe it or not was actually done by uh, Rob Zombie yeah, who, and yes there's even a Rob Zombie song too because uh, uh, part of his band Bite Zombie uh, but the sequence of course was uh, directed by Chris uh, Panowski and so he did this so this was actually based on Rob Zombie's uh, 
animated works that he did. Yeah, of course, he also went on to direct movies, too, as we all know. Yeah, <laughs> gotta love Rob Zombie. Suddenly, they wound up uh, spotting their fodders. Yeah, because they definitely look like themselves. <laughs> but they always keep leaving them behind all the time. But I want, And, of course, they don't even know each other that, that well either. Um, of course, they ha they even had a one scene where where they actually did a huge fart, and that's where it almost looked like a <laughs> a Hiroshima explosion. Yeah, yeah, nuclear explosion. It, it was just hilarious. Um, but anyway, um, also another favorite scene that I did enjoy was when the. Just when Muddy suddenly uh, picked up Beavis and Butthead, you know, threatening to shoot them, that they were going to continue to go on their trip to Washington, D.C., uh, they wound up being hidden inside the trunk. Uh, then they, <laughs> they, then they open up the trunk, and then, <laughs> and Beavis and Butthead just, just look outside, and and they're actually on the road, and and just, <laughs> and then he, <laughs> then he knocks down the. Beavis all the way down and then causes a car collision all the way around the road and and then even the butthead suddenly joins in and did the same thing uh, along with Tom Anderson just uh, driving along yeah because also he got knocked in by the, by the Hoover Dam uh, earlier I, I, I know I, I just I just can't help myself it's just hilarious So they finally uh, went to Washington D.C. and you know they just they hang around. They're just they basically just uh, spotting around and and just but already they're they're getting worried because you know they already they already saw all these uh, wanted picture signs of abuse and butthead that's been taken and they're about to go after him. Yeah, the the whole entire SWAT team and everybody else were tracking. Uh, Beavis and Butthead down. Yeah, you know, they even tried to track down the teachers, the principals, everywhere around. You know, by Agent Fleming and and Bork. And <laughs> once they went inside the White House, you know, yeah, you know, once again Beavis had became Ponholio because <laughs> they also had a picture of him too. And then the people out there at the Pentagon thought it was a it was a, a terrorist attack that's happening, or or maybe they thought it was the president, but but they begin to hear the voice of of the great Conholio, you know, just just uh, jabbering and and uh, jabbering around, and he just keeps saying, "I want my uh, where's where's the teepee? I want my teepee on my bunk hole, you <laughs> know, and all that." So, but then when Tom Anderson came, yeah, because they're already, you know, he's being searched and everything. And they already did caught uh, both Muddy and and uh, Dallas, you know, just when, just when Muddy was about to shoot uh, Dallas. Yeah, yeah, they've been caught by, by Agent Fleming and Bork, just when they're about to have sex. Um, anyway... Uh, they're about to um, they about to prepare um, to shoot uh, Beavis as the great Conholio. Um, unfortunately, you know his pants was already been picking down once they went inside. <laughs> once he went inside the uh, the motorhome of Tom Anderson, but Tom of course has Beavis's pants, and and the X five unit suddenly pops out open. It was about to fall all the way until it landed inside uh, <laughs> Butthead's uh, hands. So now they they got the X5 unit, and I know this this was yeah. Even though Butthead had a cavity search just after he was about to the score uh, Chelsea Clinton. <laughs> That's right, Bill Clinton's daughter with braces, but of course she. She knocked him uh, out of the window of the White House. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, well. So, anyway, um, they're all safe. Uh, you know, Beavis and Butthead is now uh, free. Uh, they actually took Tom Anderson to jail along with uh, Muddy and Dallas. And they were hoping they were going to get their prize once they meet President Bill Clinton. Uh, and they were hoping that they will they'll get the score and maybe earn some more money and all that, but that didn't happen, sadly. But luckily for them, they finally found their TV that was hidden inside the hotel room. And they both left together, <laughs> even though they were planning on masturbating at Anderson's uh, <laughs> uh, motorhome. <laughs> And the movie ends. Uh, it's a very funny movie. Very hilarious. Really enjoyed it a lot. And never gets old. Um, even after 21 years, it still holds up. Still hilarious. And never gets tired of it. <laughs> Especially right here. Uh, and this was a big hit when it came out uh, back in 1996 uh, during the holiday season. Uh, in fact, um, it earned $63.1 million out of its $12 million budget. And wow, that was a big hit for MTV, seeing that this was their second movie after Joe's Apartment. Yeah, the movie with the cockroaches. Yeah, it was alright. I remember that movie. Um, so yeah, this was a big hit for for MTV and Paramount because at the time Paramount um, was and still is uh, owned by Viacom as they purchased it back in 1994. Because originally this movie was going to be released by Warner Brothers along with David Geffen's production company Geffen Pictures, um, but unfortunately because of the deal of MTV being owned by Viacom, that Paramount decided to take over instead of Warner Brothers, but they did co-produce the film uh, with Geffen, so it's good to know, because David Geffen had uh, produced the, the record album for both the, the movie and the TV series, so we get all the, the awesome songs that you get. Uh, but it's always been a fun movie, it's hilarious, um, I pretty much explain how they did it and how well done the animation was. I mean, because it was definitely top notch coming from Mike Judge. Of course, it's also a cross country road picture and it plays out really straight. I love that. Because you know, a lot of crazy things are supposed to happen once they're on the road. <laughs> and they always do. Especially like uh, Cheese and Sean or or this rate. <laughs> Yeah, National Lampoon's Vacation. And I love all the humor that he had into the movie. I mean, it just never gets old. I mean, there, there are a lot of memorable scenes that I love, and I just mentioned it here in the review. I just wish um, I had a special collector's edition, but maybe if I picked up the DVD, I probably will get to see all the great features that they got with all the commentary and all the rest. But it's always fun to watch Beavis and Butthead do a lot of stupid things. I mean, they, they went for vulgar humor. It was the kind of vulgar humor that they were going for. And it, it is pretty tame compared to the vulgar humor that shows like South Park and and all the rest that we got. Yeah, even Family Guy and, and American Dad. But, but even Family Guy and American Dad were a lot tamer uh, compared to South Park. Yeah, South Park came out uh, just afterward, and of course, King of the Hill, I mean, that's Mike Judge's show, and that was one of the biggest shows that lasted for a whole lot of seasons uh, compared to the seasons that uh, Beavis and Butthead had, had, so, but either way, um, it was always been fun. And Mike Judge is a great guy. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, he does what he does best. I mean, he, you know, he does a lot of great 
humor that he loves to do. He loves to poke fun at all the all the people doing a lot of dumb things and all that. I mean, we, we get that a lot in that generation. <laughs> so we had to go for the stupid and the juvenile and the dummies uh, for teenagers. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's, um, it has a wonderful soundtrack, too. They had a lot of great songs. I mean, besides Red Hot Chili Peppers and Ride Zombie, you know, they even got songs uh, by Isaac Hayes, yeah, especially with that opening that's that's basically uh, just like Schaff or, or at this rate, Skarsky and Hutch, in a way. So it has that feel to it. <laughs> uh, I love that. Um, they, they had a lot of... They even had songs by LL Cool J, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Rancid, ACDC, yep, they even got a song by ACDC, because I know Beavis and Butthead, at this rate, Butthead wears the ACDC shirt, and Beavis wears the Metallica shirt, <laughs> yeah, they even got a song by No Doubt as well, um, yeah, Butthole Surfers, <laughs> But no doubt about it, um, Beavis and Butthead was a fun show, and still is um, one of the funniest shows I've ever watched uh, ever since I was a kid. And it's great to be a big fan of it. And I'm very happy for my friend Mia because she's also a big fan of the show, and I I'm glad she bought the DVD for me. It's Even though it's a bare bones release, but that's okay. I love the cover art all the way around. So. In fact, I thank her for that because she wanted me to do the review and, and she waited this long and well it's for you and I'm happy. So that's Beavis and Butthead do America and I give the film five stars. I'm Justin Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.